Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Corinne Clemens. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for following me right here, right now. This is Kareem and the morning. Okay, good morning. How are you guys doing? Uh, let me just go ahead and bring this up and let me just have my um Okay, so how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, we have some breaking news right here, right now. I do want to say Happy New Year's to all who are present right here. So my topics today will be the execution of a transgender woman who people fought very hard and tirelessly to get her off of death row. And unfortunately, she was executed. I will give you some information on her. I will also give you guys some information on uh, DeMar Hamlin update. That's the guy who was tackled on the field on Monday Night Football in front of millions, okay? And I will also give you information on T.S. Madison News, as well as TST TV, YouTube Gaming, and the Omega Studio News and Talk Show T update on the blog page. All right. Before I continue, I would like to say that in this month of 2023, I do want to say that uh, it marks 28 years of my aunt Shirley Ann Dunlap, the late Shirley Ann Dunlap, who passed away 28 years ago on January 3rd, 1995. And I remember it like it was yesterday, you know, because when she passed, I didn't believe it. I was in shock. I was shocked because a lot of people know me. I love my aunt Shirley. And it was, it, it, and before her passing, you know, she had, you know, medical problems. And I was there when it comes to the dressing, the changing of her bandages, her foot, her legs. I was doing that for her. When she came home. I was doing that for my aunt Shirley. And when she passed in the hospital, I was shocked until the morning of Tuesday, January 3rd, 1995. I was on my way to school and it was like, you're not going to school because Shirley died. And I was like, wow, that's unbelievable. Then, the next day, it was final because I walked downstairs and I came down and I seen like this envelope and it had the Clarence B. Wright funeral home and it had Shirley Ann Dunlap and I was like, unbelievable. And it was like sitting right there on the table you know, for all of us to see it. And I just went to the kitchen, went to the kitchen and I was like, this can't be true. So Sunday came church. They say that Sister Dunlap service is going to be tomorrow here at the Greater Little Rock Missionary Baptist Church. And, you know, so it didn't dawn on me. The next day on that Monday, the 9th, January 9th, and you guys can read the resolution on the blog page. That resolution was the resolution that was read 28 years ago at the Greater Little Rock Missionary Baptist Church in North New Jersey. So she basically uh, still was on my mind. And till I walked to the 
front uh because you know we lived in this house and it was like the attic you could look down and it was like three limousines there and i was like oh my god and i wasn't even dressed because i just was like no charlie's not dead so still didn't believe it but come to terms push comes to shove got myself dressed went to limousine drove all the way from jersey city to newark put a little art mission about the church went there seen shirley laid out all in white i was like oh my god my aunt shirley and it was crazy because it hit me and then for me and you guys know me and those who attend the funeral services for my aunt shirley uh there was a song that i had sung and it was a song that i had you know they say i stole from sister muse but it was a song that I had sung, and it was called Come On in the Lord's House, It's Gonna Rain. And I sung that song on my aunt's funeral that day. That was the good part of it. The bad part of it was seeing my brother walk down the aisle in shackles and cuffs on his feet to be escorted to see Shirley laying in that coffin. And it's so crazy because that was the first time that I seen my brother in a long time because he was always incarcerated. So to see him walking down the aisle and orange and shackles is like unbelievable. But to make a long story short, we asked, can he go to the cemetery with us? They said no, because he can only go to the funeral service. So we all got into the limousines and we all went to Baby Cemetery off of ocean ocean side that slot right there completely closed she was the third one or maybe the fourth one we were stepping all on dirt and to that day I, I think it's closed i think yeah it is closed the only people that's going there is people on top double or triple but it's closed it's full but when we went there to put shirley in it was like three maybe four people buried and it was like all oh, dirt because i remember stepping on mud but Shirley will be remembered forever as long as I'm alive. Okay. I love you, Shirley. And let's have a moment of silence for the late Shirley and Bella. All right, so just wanted to put that in archives. All right, so let's go into transgender Missouri inmate executed for fatally stabbing. Now, the only reason why I bring this story up because you know this transgender by the name of Amber Amber McLaughlin. Okay, oh, let me just use that because that's what I was using. Okay, Amber McLaughlin. She was she stabbed. Okay, before she changed, before she transitioned from a male to a female she got into an altercation stabbed allegedly stabbed her girlfriend he stabbed his girlfriend and then at some point she, he definitely showed the police where the body was and then boom he got a, a death sentence so while he was incarcerated he turned to transgender so now he becomes she and now her name is amber mclaughlin Okay, so here is the story of M. McLaughlin. Uh, so Missouri put to death uh, the first ever transgender in this country, okay, the United States of America, to death. All right, and people were trying to fight for her uh, appeal, but of course. The Supreme Court definitely, definitely denied her clemency. Okay, she was 49 years old. Her last words were, I'm sorry for what I did. 
Okay, she said, I'm sorry for what I did. This is in a final statement that McLaughlin wrote. And she said that I am loving and I am a caring person. So I want people to know that right here on Cream in the Morning that, uh, you know, I speak this because, and I, and I knew that, you know, covering the stories of Brandon Menard and Lisa Montgomery and Dustin Higgins and, you know, all of them, they were executed. And when I covered their story, I knew that if they didn't have a chance, she wasn't going to have a chance, okay? That they weren't going to spare her life. But this is why I bring this up, okay? I'm going to tell you why I bring this up. The reason why I bring the death penalty up in these cases is because sometimes you could reprieve, 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 if I'm saying that right, reprieve, her, which gives it, what that means postpone, and give uh, them a later date to look over what people, like you have these nonprofit organizations, even when in Brandon Bernard case, you know, you had Kim Kardashian uh, stepping up and, you know, trying to spare this man's life because of certain things that was happening in, you know, his case that need to be looked at. But in her case, in the Amber McLaughlin case, uh, they argue that, you know, she suffered from all type of, you know, different things from the hands of, you know, abuse of people. Let me just read this here. It says the clemency petition cited that McLaughlin's traumatic childhood and mental health issue was, uh, which the jury never heard during her trial, okay? They're also saying that foster parents rubbed feces in her face uh, when she was a toddler and her adoptive father used a stun gun on her, according to the petition. It cited several depression that result in multiple suicide attempts, both as a child and as a adult. Now, let me just say this. The reason why I, I brought that out is because, you know, it's sometimes when a person is found guilty by their peers they're found guilty by their peers okay and at some point they will want to do what is called an appeal okay and the judge says to the defendant that you have at probably 30 days to file an appeal for this case all right so in this case she was filing a petition for clemency and this was to try to spare her life or to try to turn her death warrant into into a life sentence all right now the reason why i bring this up go back the reason why i bring this up is because the crime that she the crime she did allegedly or okay things that they said she did was kill her girlfriend let me just bring you back to what dummy dummy, okay? Dummy dummy. I'm talking about the Parkland shooter, dummy dummy, who went into Marjorie Douglas Stone High School and killed those 17 people in Florida. He pled guilty to the case and they spent months weeks taxpayers dollars to have a death penalty phase trial for this man and then in the end you give this man life and he one of the options was the death penalty and you kill this transgender i don't understand I don't understand. I don't understand. I just will never understand. A man goes into a school and kills people the way he did it. He killed them execution style. He killed them with heinous and more in his, he, he killed them with malice and intent. They prove beyond reasonable doubt that he went and did this. And that state is a death penalty state. 
or maybe the, the charge, you know, was definitely phase. But that man got a life sentence. And this transgender by the name of Amber McLaughlin died yet again by the taxpayer dollars in the death penalty state. So I'm saying that her life could have been spared. All right, moving on to my next story. All right, so yes, the NFL, the sports world, everybody is coming together to pray for DeMar Hamlin. We are actually going to give you an update of, this is the current update of what's happening. But, you know, well, let me just take a look at this because I, me, I was sleeping when this happened. And... When I look at this video, right, let me just take a look at this. And, you know, it it, it really, uh, and I'm really into this because, and I really want to bring this up because this brings me back to a story way back in Georgia City uh, where a guy by the name of Tahi Ramsey, who played for Snyder High School in Jersey City, he died. He died. Uh, well, this is what happened. Cavan, Cavan Point, Cavan Field in Jersey City is the area where they had a game. They, they were having a game, football game. And Tahi Ramsey, the late Tahi Ramsey, was tackled by a person. And what happened was, I think the ambulance didn't go on the field or something, or they did get on the field and they took him right away to the hospital. But Tahi died. And as a result of his injury, it was an aneurysm, an aneurysm that had somehow, you know, burst from, I think it happened from the tackle. I don't know. But this reminds me, this story right here reminds me of Tahi Ramsey's story. So let's get into this. So I'm looking at this video and this video is showing number 85 tackling three, and three happens to be DeMar. And you can see from the video, okay, I'm not going to show the video because you guys can see the video online. From the video that this man is tackled. Now, did I see the game with Tahi? No, I just heard about it. You know how Sports people talk about it and everything, but you know, people talk about it and stuff around school and Jersey City, the news and everything. But this tackle was something. It had to be something. Because this man was tackled, and then right out of nowhere, he stood up and then he dropped. So Something happened between him getting tackled, standing up, and then dropping. So according to the news, they're saying that he collapsed and they started CPR on him and they needed to use the AED. Now, CPR is cardio pulmonary resuscitation, if I'm saying that right. And AED is automatic electronic defibrillator. And those mechanisms, which the CPR is used with hand and mouth and compressions, and the AED is used with pads and adults. Now, they're saying that this man was down 
for they did these procedures for him for more than 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Now, I'm not sure in the medical field, but in the medical field, I'm pretty sure 10 minutes without oxygen and all the other nutrition and all the things that you need for your brain to succeed and run on, need to, to go. 10 minutes is not good. Okay, so let's give the update. Let's look at the update. This is the recent update on the Mar Hamlet uh, update. All right. So they're saying right here, uncle is saying that the safety man, the Marham, had to be resuscitated twice on Monday after suffering cardiac arrest on the football field, according to multiple reports. All right. And then let me just explain this to you guys. We all know that we are human beings. And Sometimes we don't know what's in the closet, all right? We don't know what people are doing because that's just our secret in our nature as being homo sapiens, okay? That's what we do. So we don't know if this man was doing any type of things, supplements, uh, whatever. We don't know, okay? We don't know. And I'm saying this because we just don't want to go to, to speculations of any any kind. And then they'd be like, well, why would he do this because he he's starting to gain? Or why would he do this because maybe he's a good person? And, you know, he's, he shows that's just one half. You know, everybody that's in the spotlight, there's always a dark side. There's a light and there's a dark. There's always there's two different sides. Okay? So we don't know everything about this man here. I get that from when T.S. Madison says uh, she cannot be married to this man. She's committing adultery. When she had uh, Leandra, uh, Leandra Johnson as a, from Sunday's Best, and her and Kaya was on together, and they were doing the Christmas show, and it was like she cannot be married to this man. She's committing adultery. And then the man wanted to marry another lady, right? This is another saying that I say, and this comes from this. The, 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 the lady, the man was behind her, and he was like, I cannot marry because this lady still has uh, my name on the certificate, and he can't marry because his name's there. So one of the callers call in and say that this man back here is on a DL. And <laughs> the girlfriend comes into the camera and says, that's a lot. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> It's so funny when you see it, yo. It's so funny. So I use that. So I use that's a lot. Okay. Well, so you hear me say that. I, I get it from that. All right. And if you hear me say this man, the way I say it, it's because of that. All right. So anyway, so uh, we don't know what this man has been doing before the game. He probably been doing supplements. He's probably been doing things. You know, who knows? We don't know. We do not freaking know what these people are doing when they go on a football field. We don't. No, okay? And you know, people could do that and still play. Like, seriously. Now, all those sides. I was smoking weed and running. I was, and it's like when I was smoking weed, it was like, I can run better. Like, and it's like, I can smoke a blunt and run. And it's like, well, how the fuck you could smoke and run? No, I could literally smoke and run and not be tired. I could run for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And miles. And not be <laughs> and huffing and puffing. I go up hills, down hills. Uh, I, I did when I went to Atlanta. When I, I ran to Atlanta, downtown Atlanta, they got the hills going down by a Mercedes, that uh, Mercedes um, 
Ben's complex area. They got the hell going around. Yo, I'm telling you, I ran it. Trust me. They got the hills going down, going up, going to downtown. I ran it. Smoked the blunt before I left. Go down, please. It was excellent. Amazing. All right. So listen. So we don't know what this man was doing, but according to this, they're saying that he is on a ventilator. He is receiving 50% oxygen after intentionally receiving 100% oxygen. So uh, let me see. It says he also said that there was concern that uh, his sustained a lung damage. Right. But I want to know, I want to basically know if he was down for that long, then. You know, I, I look, I just want to know is, is in a medical field, is that like bad? Because if Tim is bad, like, I really hope that this man falls through because a lot of people is going to his uh, GoFundMe page and donating to his cause of what he wants people to do, and that is. I guess, let me see. Oh, it's a campaign. Okay, it's a campaign. Charity. So the kids, all right, nice. The kids and also helping out Mom's Day Care Center in McKees Rock, Pennsylvania. So yeah, there's GoFundMe page and the GoFundMe page now has about 5,988,000 and his goal was 2,500, all right? All right. All right, moving on. T.S. Madison News. All right, so T.S. Madison, I wanna say congratulations to T.S. Madison because T.S. Madison is now reporting that she is in MTV. Hold on, let me just go to this and this, this. Okay. So T.S. Madison is now reporting that she is a judge in RuPaul's RuPaul's Next Drag Superstar. And it premieres Friday for two hours from six, uh, June, June, January the 6th at 8 p.m. for two hours on MTV. So you guys can go there and look at that. There's RuPaul Drag Race, and it's a two-hour premiere. So shout out to T.S. Madison for that. Definitely, definitely bringing in residual income. Like, seriously. All right. So, yeah, I'm definitely got, like, so many different screens, and then I'm, like, looking at And then the time is, like, that is never really what time this is. What, what time it is. I'll normally uh, be in the studio this time. All right. So, oh, he said it's 5.50 a.m. <laughs> That's Noah. Noah from uh, from Noah's Ark. All right. And then let me just go ahead and give you guys update for TST TV on YouTube. All right. So... Um, no, don't put that one over here. Okay. So, yeah. So, everybody, please welcome the new year in for TSC TV, YouTube Gaming. And I want to also say that, you guys, the Democracy 4, okay, the Democracy 4, that will be coming very, very soon when I say, uh, Democracy 4, I'm talking about the season finale. Why the season finale very soon after just four episodes? Because I'm very mad at that. And, I'm, and I probably just saved this for the season finale. But I'm very upset at democracy. The, the, the team over there at democracy, you guys are, I don't even have the words right now. But I can tell you that you guys pulled a good one, and I fell for it, but it's cool. And I think Steam, the workshop, 
that deals with the games. I, I really believe that at some point, if a game is updating to two or three or four and developers start or stop developing the first set and people paid a lot of money for that along with DLCs, it should be able to work. It should be able to work if you full release access of the game. So I'm saying this to say that I don't know why Democracy 3 is not working. All the DLCs that I paid over $15 for, that's three of them, they're not working. And when I cut it on, it shuts off. And it's not working. So you guys put all your effort into Democracy 4. And then when I play Democracy 4 and then I give episodes on it, what happens? I install a mod and then it crashed the game. I've played City Skylines. I've played um, America Truck Simulator. I've played Arrows Truck Simulator 2. I've played all those games. They have mods. And if the game crash, I still, it don't even crash. It just, if a mod's not working, it just says a mod's not working. And then you can still continue on with your game. But in De Democracy 4, D4, if a mod stopped working, you definitely lost the savings of your game. Okay? Everything is done. You can't redo anything. Once in one mod is messed up, broken, you basically cannot do anything with your game. So, it was three episodes that had that was produced it is on tst tv youtube channel you guys can go up there i tried going back in you know picking my cabinet members they suck okay uh doing everything that i try to do everything is just not working out it's not and then i had to add on new mods so the season finale of democracy 4 is coming very soon here in january of 2023 all right and last but not least updates for the omega studio news and talk show t at this time let's hear a word from our sponsors Okay, and at this time, at this time, this will be an update from the Omega City News and Talk Show T. All right, so let's see. I can tell you that uh, Omega Studio News, hold on, let me just go ahead and bring this up. Okay, thing. The Omega Studio News and Talk Show T. Archive. All right. Should bring it up. Okay. All right, guys. So here is the uh, Omega Studio News blog page. Now, if you guys want to go on to the talk show t blog page uh you can just just go to talk show t and y'all will see the latest episode for democracy four and this video here i tell you will let you guys know everything that happened like in here like i'm telling you it will give you a whole clarification of what is you going know, on I was saying that and yes, why yes, I decided to it's gonna get worse, give you worse, season better. finale. But and I will tell you in the season happens, finale video everybody on why I, just, I decided 
to end the episode in the series. All right. All right. So again, uh, happy anniversary to Ma and Shirley on this day. Happy anniversary to the late Shirley and Dunlap. 28 days on this day. This is actually a photo. This is my cousin Poppy. This is the late Shirley Dunlap. And you know, this here, this outfit that we're looking at, remember I said in the beginning of my broadcast, uh, she was all in white, laid in white. This is the 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 outfit that she was laid to rest in. Beautiful. And you see Uncle Michael, this is Uncle Michael, they helping her up. They're helping her up because, you know, Shirley had her uh, leg amputated, her toes amputated. So uh, they help her up out of the wheelchair. And we're standing in front of Greater Little Rock Mich Missionary Baptist Church in North New Jersey. And this right here is the church man, as we always say, church man, that's a white man. And this down here is my cousin Charles. Uh, you guys see him on my page, Charles Charles Avery Randall. I don't want to call him name. All right. I, I call him Charles Avery Randall. So, but yeah, it's my cousin Charles. So yeah, the, this here is photo. And, uh, my cousin Charles alive, uh, Poppy's alive, Uncle Michael's deceased, and the late Shirley Ann is deceased. Her nails always stay beautiful, and she definitely had gold for days. Gold, trust me, gold chain, uh, uh, rings, everything. My, my Aunt Shirley was, please, my God. On this day, we lost a God-fearing lady. She come to love the Lord with all her heart and soul on this day, Tuesday, January 3rd, 1995, the late Shirley Ann Dunlap was called home to the Lord in the early morning hours at the Jersey City Medical Center where she worked in the OR, the operating room, for more than 30 years. We love and miss you like it was yesterday. Rest in power, my black queen. And again, this is the resolution that I told you guys about, the resolution that I told you about. And let me just go ahead and read this resolution if I can see it. Okay. So let me just read it. If I can, let me just zoom this in real quick. Oh, I gotta zoom out. I don't know if it's zooming out on there. But let me see. All right, that's my Aunt Shirley right there. Like I told you, she always like had gold and everything. So this is one of her photos. I believe that this apartment that she was in was on Garfield. Because we had, she had, she used to move in some big apartments. So I think this is on Garfield. Uh, this is a resolution. It is to be resolved that on this day, Monday, January 9th, 1995, because that's when Shirley had her um, service at, at the Greater Little Rock Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, the late sister Shirley Dunlap was a faithful member of the Greater Little Rock Missionary Baptist Church. She was not only a faithful member, but a willing and dedicated worker dedicated worker yes and uh definitely my aunt my aunt was definitely a member of the flower circle so she definitely brought flowers into the church all the time dedicated worker and doers of god's plan for our life the late sister dunlap was dedicated to her work and well-being of the church sister dunlap always made sure that our sanctuary had fresh baskets of flowers every first sunday of each month that is true She's absolutely right. She was the president of the Floral Club, chairperson of the Women's Day Committee, and a member of the Pastor Age Club. Although Shirley Dunlap, what, Sister Dunlap was unable to function physically, she made certainly that everything that she had planned to do was done decently and in order. Sister Dunlap was made Greater Little Rock Missionary Baptist Church her home place of worship on April 20. 5th, 1993. The Greater Little Rock Missionary Baptist Church family miss her. However, we know that there those we love are always with, with us. Their laughter, their smile, their advice, their thoughtfulness, and all their gifts of God's grace, love that are ours to keep. Be it further that resolve that the pastor and the board of ministry, trustees, and boards extend this sincere sympathy to the family of the late Sister Shirley Dunlap. My heart. I love you, Shirley.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is all the time we have right here on Kareem in the morning. Again, I want to thank you so much for being here right here right now. For more information, you guys can visit the blog page. Have a good one. Bye.